what's going on guys so today we are going to be pulling the camshafts out of this uh, s52 cylinder head here the machine shop that i was going to take the cylinder head down to has requested that i pull the cams off before they work on it so they said either i could do it or they could do it uh, i prefer to do it myself for a couple reasons one is they don't have to charge me labor for it for taking it off and i also can be more cautious with taking the cams off there's a chance they might break it so basically we're just going to be pulling the camshafts off today Tools we will be using 11 millimeter socket, 3 8 driver, 22 millimeter box end wrench. So this guy is a 22 millimeter box end wrench. We're going to be using the open end to go over the section of the camshaft. On forums and online, it says it's a 22 millimeter, but for some reason, I don't know if it's M3 cams, this actually doesn't fit on my camshaft. It might work on your guys's, but it doesn't work on mine. So I'm actually going to be using an adjustable crescent wrench but do be careful when you're using this to remove the cams very like as precisely as you can make it perfect you know i know crescent wrenches are sort of like a cringeworthy tool to use on these especially with something as a camshaft being so delicate you want to use this correctly and properly don't half-ass using it be as precise and accurate with using the crescent as you can. Now, for removing the rest of the bearing caps, except for the main one for cylinder one, which is gonna be the preloaded bearing cap, I'm gonna go ahead and use this guy. It's a 3 8 driver, like electric air ratchet. If you have a pneumatic one, that works too. If you don't, you can still use this. This will just go by a lot faster with taking the other bearing caps off. It can save you some time and have your friend who's helping you out don't have to help you out as long. And so that brings me to the last tool we'll need basically is uh, a friend so you're gonna have to use someone to hold the cam in place while you unscrew the rest of the bearing caps with one of these guys um, they don't necessarily have to stay there that long or hold it in position I'll sort of explain what their job is as we go through I would not recommend attempting this alone this is one of those like cylinder head removing type of stuff where it is a lot easier if you have someone to help you out it will go by a lot smoother and a lot quicker. Okay, so I have a couple of books here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is set the cylinder head down on top of these two books so that you're not laying the cylinder head down directly on the face, on the face side of the cylinder head. If you'll notice, some of the valves are still open. It's not necessarily good to lay the head down on these valves, just because you might bend them or put an equal force somewhere you don't want to. So I'm just gonna take some paper towels and just lay the cylinder head across the top Sort of set it on the ends like that so you don't really have to worry about any of the valves being laid down on the ground itself so you don't have to worry about bending or breaking any of the uh, any of the valves okay so now we're just going to go over setup for how we're going to pull the cams off or the technique we're going to use so the problem with taking these off is that the cams are very long six cylinder cams have one of the longest camshafts out there because they are in the line and the cams are very long and the way they're made they're very strong but they are very brittle so if you flex them in any one way too much they have a tendency to snap which is not good and snapping cams is always a bad thing especially if they're m3 cams like these these can run for 600 700 dollars a set used so it's good to do the proper technique you could go one by one all the way down the line and just unscrew each of them like a half a turn or a quarter of a turn or some stupid thing like that and i've heard that technique works i've never done it myself i've always done by the second bearing cap so what you want to do is you want to sort of angle the cam up in more so only one set of valves is pressing down on the cam at once. I think it's on this guy where you get it right. And I'll show you guys how to do that, but I just wanna go over how I think the technique works and why it works. I've heard a lot of people discussing why you can't just undo all of them, and I think you can, but I'm gonna explain why the single bearing cap technique works or why I think it works. And I think it's because each valve, each set of cams is at a different position on the valve spring. That sort of makes sense. And because of that, this one is facing straight down so these valves are open. This one doesn't have any pressure on it at all. This one's not all the way on so it's got like a little bit of pressure. So there's different pressures on the bearing caps at different points on the camshaft. So if you were to bring them all up equally, for instance, this one would have a lot more pressure than this one, which has almost zero pressure. Now there is some lifter preload and valve spring preload and all that stuff, but it, it's more of the actual concept than it is of the pressures on the cam lobes, if that makes sense. I might be rambling, 
but basically we're gonna rotate the cam so only one set of lobes have pressure on it and I'll show you guys how to do that in a sec but because only one set will have pressure on it all the rest of them won't we'll be able to take the bearing caps for all of them except for the one because it will have all of the spring pressure on it and then we can go back and forth and lift the whole cam up just by using the one pressure on here if you try and take them off all equally this one will have no pressure this one will have a lot of pressure and that single pressure in that spot versus the whole rest of the cam cause it to snap so let's jump right in and one thing to note is the technique is the same for the intake and the exhaust cam there are no i'm not going to make a separate video for intake and exhaust cam you guys will see me take off the exhaust cam too i'm not going to re-explain the entire method because it's basically the same it is again on cylinder one and you do want to make sure all the lifters will be spinning in their boards before you start taking off so if you'll notice between cylinder three and four the cam is sort of hexed off and supposedly you can use a 22 millimeter wrench to hold it in position but mine doesn't fit and I cannot find a 23 millimeter wrench for the life of me on either of those so I'm gonna be using a crescent wrench right here so I'm just gonna be very careful in setting it up to get minimal play but you'll notice you can actually rotate the cam with this which is sort of what we're gonna want to do but basically as we rotate the cam it will rotate it and the cams will be pushing down on certain lifters while others will not that's basically the nature of how the cam works now when you're rotating it the main cap we're going to be using is bearing cap one so we're going to want to set the cam in the correct position to where only bearing cap one has pressure on it and then we're just going to undo all the rest of them while leaving this one in place and that's going to be the job of your partner he is going to hold the cam he's going to hold the cam in position while you undo the rest of these the thing with setting the cam in position for this is that on bearing cap number one the camshaft is not going to be pointing straight down on the lifters and springs it's going to be offset slightly to where the rest of them don't have pressure on it and it's sort of cocked off to the side it's not directly straight down so your partner is going to have to hold the cam in place if you get it in the right position it will stay there i've noticed at least on mine but because it's not pointing straight down it'll be cocked to the side there's a chance that the spring and the lifter will snap the cam back up into position causing another set of lobes to push down on the spring which will then bring one side of the cam up and possibly break the cam so they're not they're more of insurance they're here to hold it in case the cam tries to slip back so they're basically just going to be holding it in position they don't have to be pushing on it or turning on it they just got to hold it in place so in case that the cam does snap back they will be there sort of to hold it in place and prevent it from snapping back so how we're going to set the cam is you want cam lobes for cylinder number one pointing straight almost straight down and you can check if you did it right if you look directly underneath the camshafts you will see the lifters that they push on the valve springs right so if you have it in the correct position, you'll notice if you find one that's straight up and you stick your finger on the lifter underneath the cam, you'll notice like with your fingernail, the end of the finger, you can actually spin the lifter. The lifter, you'll push on it, the lifter will rotate. That means that there's no pressure on it. You're gonna wanna go in, I wish I could get it on camera, but it's kind of a tight space, but you can literally move and rotate the lifter in a bore with your finger. Now, if you can't, for instance, here's a set right here on cylinder four, that are still pushing down i can't move these guys with my fingers so that means there's still pressure on it but this one on cylinder six because the loves are pushing straight up i can rotate the lifters in their bore so basically i'm going to move the cam around until i can rotate all of the lifters in their bores and that's how i know that i'm at the correct spot so you can sort of notice you can check by the low positions so you'll notice one is compressed, two they're all the way out, um, three they're all the way out, four they're kind of off to the side, I can spin them in place, which is good. On five they're more pointing this way and four they're more down this way. But if I get in here on five, I notice that I can't spin those and on six I can. So I still have to turn it a little bit more on five. Let's try right there. Yep, I can spin those too. Let's check on four. Nope, can't really spin them on four. Okay, so there we are. So it's sort of just basically going back and forth on all the lobes to make sure you can rotate them. And when you get it right, you'll know because you can rotate all of them in the bore 
fairly easily. I'll leave some forms and threads in the description of this video so you can look more into it. This is one of those things that you should be well informed on other threads on how to do this too. Don't just use my video alone. Do your additional research to fill in the gaps where I might not be completely bridging you know, the entire sequence. I try to make these as detailed as I can, but obviously there's still gonna be some things I miss here and there. So there's a good Pelican parts thread on there. I'll put that in the description and some other forums online that you guys can read to help with this. But I think I need to take it back a little bit. Okay, so I now have the cam in the proper position to where I can rotate all of the lifters except for cylinder number one. And if you'll notice, the cam is staying where it is. If you look on the lobes when you get it in the correct position, it sort of takes a little bit of playing back and forth, rotating it this way and this way to get it in the proper position. It probably took me a couple minutes to get it set up like this way. But you'll notice on number one, they're not straight down. They're sort of cocked off to the side again. So you want your friend to hold it in position here just to make sure the cam doesn't snap. Now for what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take the ratchet and I'm gonna undo all of the bearing caps except on cylinder number one. And when we get to cylinder number one, I'm gonna crack them and then I'm gonna do half turns all the way until the cam is completely off. So basically until all of the threads, it's ran out of thread on both of them, it's gonna go halfway and it's gonna be pretty tedious and it might take a little bit. And then once I remove that bearing cap, it should just pop up. So. Another thing to note is these bearing caps are labeled. So A1, A2, A3, those are coordinated with the bearing caps on the cam. So when you do reinstall the cam, make sure those guys are set up in the correct position. I couldn't exactly tell you what would happen if you mix them up. I just know it's not a good thing to mix up. So I'm gonna go get my good friend here and he's gonna hold it in place while I unzip the rest of these, except for cylinder one. And then we'll start working on this guy. So now they're all cracked. Okay, so now we're just gonna take the bearing caps off for all of them except for cylinder number one. Okay, and now from here, we're going to crack them. And we're basically just gonna do quarter turns on each one. And the pressure of the springs and the lifters will slowly pull the cam up away from the from the lifters and trays. Half turns is ideal because it will bring the cam up evenly. If you just undo one, it'll crank it over to one side, which could cause the cam to snap. So as you're noticing, you might notice that the bearing cap is starting to lift off with the cam. That would be the tension of the springs pushing the cam and the bearing cap up. There we go. You can let go of that now, Don. There we go. Cam is off. Just lift it up. So now as you can see, we got the cam off, which is good. It's still intact. One piece didn't flex or bend. So it's really not that hard. You just gotta be very cautious when you're doing it. You know, if you're not comfortable with it, don't try and rush it. Okay, so now we're gonna be doing the intake side. So, I'm going to turn the head around. And from here, basically gonna do the same exact thing, which is to get the cam set up properly. The only difference is the intake is facing the other way, so cylinder number one's gonna be over here. I'm gonna be rotating the cam until I can find the sweet spot where I can rotate all of the lifters in the bore. So it's gonna be between cylinders four and five that you're gonna have to sort of go back and forth to find the sweet spot. So as you'll start to notice, if you push it one way in, it'll start pushing down on cylinder four. And if you pull it back too much, it'll start pushing down on cylinder five. So I've got five spinning, but four isn't spinning. So I'm gonna move back just a little bit. Five is still spinning, a little bit back more. So I've got four spinning, but five doesn't spin. So that's it. So I got four and five spinning, six spins, two and three are basically straight up. So they spin two. So now all of them are spinning on all these guys. None of them are open. So we're gonna go ahead and start pulling the bearing caps on off, off all of these, except for on cylinder number one again. And we're basically just gonna do the same to bring the whole cam up again. 
So the other thing to note is those Swiss Crescent wrenches. This one fits a little bit better than the last one did. So hopefully it's less restrained. So I'm just gonna use the driver to crack them. Then we're going to start pulling the bearing caps off again. And then again, we're going to do half turns on cylinder number one. There we go. That bearing cap can come off. There we go. Cool. I think it off. Sweet. Thank you, Don. You're welcome, bro. Again, no cracks, no flexing. Good shape. So one last thing is have a good place to sit your cams down. I know on the back of here, this doesn't move. This is the car the cams belong on, so it's not going to get moved. Nobody sets anything on top of this, so I know they're not going to get bumped or, you know, set something on, so I'm just going to leave them there. Good shape. Okay, so the next step before we take it off to the machine shop is we're gonna have to get the lifters and trays out. There are a couple techniques to getting it out. Uh, the first one is, is you can take a magnet and stick little tiny magnets, like little tiny square ones you could pick up at like, like a hobby shop or something, and just stick them on the back of the lifters and then take one of those uh, welding rods and just tap them all down to the lifters come with it. Uh, I don't have magnets or welding rods, so I'm just going to basically pull it off and the lifters are going to fall out into the head. But so after that, I'm basically just going to flip it over and drop them back in. Uh, really the only thing that matters on these is the orientation. So you want to make sure you'll notice when I pull one lifter out, it's going to have a, the side that the cam sits on that's perfectly flat like this. And then the other side, which is where the valve springs are going to sit on. So I'm just going to wiggle the tray up like that. Yeah, they sort of slide up. There we go. So, I'm gonna flip it back upside down. And so here's one of the lifters. This is the side that the um, spring sits on. So the top out of the spring sits on this. And then the cam sits on this side. So, I'm gonna drop them in here, one by one. It doesn't really matter which one it goes on, I don't think, but I'm gonna try and keep it within the same section. I'm probably going to pull these guys out and clean them. I don't know if you can tell that milkshake stuff actually is oil because the cylinder head gasket went so they're pretty dirty as well as the trays and the cams. I'm going to give everything a good clean. Uh, the machine shop will clean up the head. They're probably going to wash it so I'm not too worried about cleaning the head myself but the rest of these is bad to be dirty like that. Okay so when they're inside the trays like that and you have it upside down, the underside of the tray where the lifter bearings are sort of hold them in place. So as long as you keep it upside down, I'm going to go set this right next to the cams. Setting it face up like that, they shouldn't, I shouldn't lose any and they shouldn't really fall out. So again, this probably isn't the best technique for taking these out. It's kind of messy. I sort of do have to clean up a little bit. I don't really want to go out and buy magnets. So a couple of them stayed in that time. Three of them stayed in. There we go. Okay, so that's it. Our cams, lifters, and trays are all out. Now at this point, because we don't have any of the valves being pushed down by the cams that aren't there, the bottom of the head is perfectly flat. All the valves are sitting within their seats. So now you can actually go ahead and lay this down on its face now, as opposed to before where you couldn't because you would crush a valve. Just a little bit easier way to transport it now with the cams. I would not have to worry about all that good stuff. And now the machine shop doesn't have to take the cam off in order to do their own work. So. I'm going to go take this down there. We're going to have them clean up the deck and check the valve seals and all that good stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching. Keep it fresh and I'll see you guys later. Maybe you should take it.